Once upon a time, there was a man who lived in Scotland. The man was quite old. His name was Walter. Walter had never married. He had no children or family nearby. He had lived for many years alone, but he was very kind. He always treated everyone nicely. Walter had never travelled far. He had travelled around his home in Scotland. But he had not gone farther. Now it was time to act. He had a mission. Walter didn't have a lot of funds, but he was not poor. He had saved some money in his younger years. He planned to use that money for his mission. He must go to three separate places. He needed money for food, hotels and travel. He had a mission, and he must complete it. First, Walter travelled to Edinburgh. A lot of people watched him as he passed by. He hadn't cut his hair in a long time. He had a long beard. His clothes were very strange as well. He looked a bit different on the streets of the big city. Walter arrived at the meadows. It was a very large park in Edinburgh. It was full of people. Walter approached a young man. The man was about 25 years old. He was reading a local newspaper. He was sitting against a tree. He looked very calm. Walter sat down next to the man. Good afternoon, Walter said. Hello, answered the man. He looked at Walter suspiciously. Then he carried on reading. How are you, David? Walter said. The man looked up. He was very surprised. How did this strange person know his name? He looked at the old man carefully. Did you say David? he asked. Yes, I did. How do you know my name? I can't tell you that. David stopped reading the newspaper. He looked at Walter, this time even more carefully. He looked at the long beard. He tried to imagine him with no beard. Nothing. He had no idea who the old man was. What do you want? asked David. By now he was very suspicious. Don't worry, said Walter. I haven't come to harm you. I'm here to tell you about something. Go ahead, replied the man. Tell me. Walter pulled a picture out of his pocket. In the picture there was a chest. It looked very old. It also looked like it might have something inside it. Something of value. What's that? David asked. Don't you know what it is? It looks like a chest. I've never seen it in my life. Walter looked at David closely. Then he pointed to the picture. Look at this. David looked. The chest had a lock. The lock had three zeros on it. It's a lock. Yes, and Walter continued. The numbers are missing, David questioned. That's it, said Walter. All three numbers are missing. The he looked at David closely. I need those three numbers for my mission, Walter said. Mission? What mission? I can't tell you that, the old man replied calmly. David didn't understand. He had no idea what the man wanted. How could he give the man numbers he didn't know? Finally, Walter said, I'm sure you've got one of those numbers. I don't know what you were talking about. Think about it, David. You must have an old object. An object with a number on it. David thought carefully. He had no such object. He was sure of it. Then he remembered something. He did have one thing with a number. 
Maybe that was it? Now that you mention it, he said excitedly, I may have something. Wait here. I'll go and get it. Where are you going? asked Walter. To my house. I need to get something. Wait, I'll come with you. David looked at the man suspiciously once again. The man was old. He seemed nice. He guessed it would not be a problem. Okay, he said. Follow me. David and Walter left the park. They went back along a small street. Then they took a bus to David's house. It was in a different part of town. While they travelled, David asked Walter, What's your name? My name is Walter, Walter Davies. And how long have you been in Edinburgh? Mr Davies. Oh, please call me Walter. No need to be so polite. OK, Walter. How long have you been in Edinburgh? I've been here two hours. Oh, really? That's not long. Yes, but I like it. There are a lot of nice people and interesting sights here. Yes, there are. The two men continued talking. Soon they reached David's house. The house was small and neat. David took Walter to the garage. David kept many things from his past there. He had things from when he was a boy. He had some old photos. He even had some old school notes. What are we looking for here? asked Walter. I remembered something I have. It sounds like the object you are looking for. An old object with a number? Yes, an old object with a number. Please wait a minute. I'm going to look. For half an hour, David searched. Walter tried to help. David asked Walter to sit down. He wanted to find it himself. After an hour, David finally found the object. Look, Walter, he said with excitement, I found it. What have you found? Walter asked. He got up and walked over. He looked at David carefully. How do you know it's what I need? I don't know, but I've had this for a long time. And it has a number. David unwrapped an old cloth. Inside was a gold necklace. And inside the necklace, there was a number. When you said you needed something with a number, David began, I remembered this. Do you remember who gave you that necklace? Asked Walter. I'm not sure. I've had it since I was a baby. Walter smiled. He opened the garage door. Where are you going? David asked. I'm finished here, replied Walter. Remember that number? And read this. He handed David a letter. Then he walked away. Wait, come back. Don't you want the necklace? Called David. But Walter was gone. He disappeared through the doorway. Walter returned to central Edinburgh. He caught the train to the airport. His next stop was Northern Ireland. A few hours later, Walter arrived safely in Northern Ireland. The city of Belfast was full of people. There were many exciting things to do and see, but Walter had a mission. He knew just where to go. Walter called a taxi. He told the driver a local address. They agreed on a rate. It was in a faraway part of Belfast. After some time, he arrived at a large house. The house looked very expensive. The owner took good care of it. It was probably owned by someone rich. It had a very large garden. There were several dogs running around in it. The house even had a tennis court.
Walter stood outside. He simply looked at the house for a while. Then he rang the doorbell. He rang again and waited for someone to answer. Hello, he called. Nobody came. No one seemed to be home. The old man looked around. He decided to wait. Walter pulled out the photo of the chest. He looked at it closely and smiled. He put the photo back inside his jacket. He waited some more. Walter heard a car approaching. As expected, it was an expensive car. There was a woman inside it. She wore big sunglasses. She didn't see Walter. The woman pressed a button. The garage door opened. She slowly drove in. She still didn't see Walter. The woman reached for the button again. She was closing the garage door. Walter might miss her. Excuse me, wait, called Walter. At last the woman saw Walter. She stopped immediately. The garage door remained open. Yes, who are you? she asked. Can I talk to you for a moment, please? asked Walter. The woman looked at him suspiciously. She walked out of the garage. A butler came up from the garden. He looked at the woman and said, Miss Murray, shall I take care of your car? Yes, Brian. Thank you. Miss Lucy Murray, am I correct? asked Walter. Yes, that's me. Lucy looked at Walter closely. I've come to talk to you. It's important, important. If it's business, I can refer you to my office. No, it's not business, replied Walter. What could it be? Lucy asked. Walter only smiled. Well, whatever it is, come with me. Come into the house, please. Walter followed the woman inside. The house was very big. In fact, it was huge. It was also very beautiful. Is this all yours? asked Walter. Yes, she answered. I'm a professional designer. At age 19, I started a company. She paused and looked around. What can I say? I've done very well. I can see that. Wow, you have must have done a lot of work. Yes, I worked very hard. She started walking again. Come this way, please. Walter and Lucy went up some steps. They came to a large door. The door was wooden and very pretty. It was an old design. Is your house very old? asked Walter. Lucy smiled. No, it's not. But it was built to an old design. I have very traditional tastes. Lucy opened the door. Walter looked around in surprise. It was a huge room. It was full of beautiful and expensive furniture. It was also very neat and clean. Brian the butler soon came in. He had brought afternoon tea. Sir, said Brian. Walter, please. Walter, would you like something to drink? Yes, a cup of tea. Thank you. Lucy took off her jacket. It was a very hot day. Brian spoke to Walter again. Let me take your jacket, sir. Walter took off his jacket. He handed it to the butler. Brian left the room and then quickly returned. He handed some hot tea to Walter. Then he left Lucy and Walter alone. Lucy and Walter sat down. They looked at each other. Welcome to my home, Walter. May I ask why you are here? Walter drank some tea. Then he set his cup on the table. I need to know a number, he said calmly. Like David, Lucy was surprised. A number? she asked. Yes, a number. A specific number, asked Lucy. Yes, 
It would be on an object you have. Please make an effort to remember it. Lucy thought for a while. She tried to understand what Walter meant. However, unlike David, she didn't remember anything. I don't know what you mean. Please, if you could explain Walter looked around. The second number must be here somewhere, he thought. Of course, the photo. He must show her the photo. Can your butler bring my jacket, please? asked Walter. Of course, replied Lucy. Brian left the room. Seconds later, he appeared with Walter's jacket. Walter reached into his jacket. It had many pockets. It was difficult to find the photo. It took time. Lucy was becoming impatient. At last he found it. Here it is. Walter laughed. I have it. We need the number for this. He put the picture of the chest on the table. Lucy took the picture in her hands. She looked at it carefully. Suddenly she remembered something. I don't know why, but I think I remember something, she said. Think, Lucy. Think, said Walter. Lucy stood up. Come with me, Walter, she said. I don't know who you are or what you want, but you've made me think of something. Walter smiled. He and Lucy left the house. They entered a small building next to it. The inside of the building was like a small private museum. There were many drawings, paintings and other things of value. Near a beautiful drawing, Lucy found a small box. She opened it. There was a necklace inside. The necklace was just like David's. It was very old, but Lucy was able to open the necklace. She was still able to recognize the number inside. Lucy gave the necklace to Walter. He looked at it carefully. OK, that's all I needed, he said calmly. I still don't understand, Walter. What is it that you want? The chest reminded me of the necklace, but I don't know why. Do you? Is that important? Walter paused a moment. I have to go now, Lucy. Please don't ask any more questions. He handed her a letter. Then Walter paused and said, Remember the number, and read this. It will help. Walter turned and left Lucy's house. As he disappeared, he called. I'm off to London. See you soon, Lucy. Lucy didn't say goodbye. She couldn't. She had no idea why Walter had come. She looked at the letter. It all seemed very suspicious, but yet somehow important. She preferred to forget everything, but she would let the old man have his fun. She slowly opened the letter. Belfast Airport, Walter bought food for the trip. What he really needed was a rest. He was getting tired. Then he remembered. There was just one more person to meet. Then his mission was complete. Walter boarded his flight. Shortly after, he arrived in London.